And welcome to High School Physics Explained. In today's video, I'm going to look at how you might best plan out and write a good long response question. Of course, I'm concentrating mainly on physics here, but in any subject, you often have questions in exams that require a longer response. What is the most effective way to make sure that you write an answer that meets all the criteria and goes to the depth that's required? Well, today I want to introduce to you a concept called idea with an edge, which is actually an outworking of a system called Alarm, a learning and response matrix developed by Max Wood. So I want to acknowledge that what I am presenting here is not something that I've made up, but something that's been developed by various uh, educators, Max Woods being the key person here, and teachers in a number of other schools, including Blackstone High. And I'll put a link in my description for further details on that. But in essence, what we're going to be discussing is a concept called with ideas with an edge. Now, before I discuss ideas with an edge, why do we want to do this? Why do we want to have some sort of system that helps us make sure our answers are full? Well, first of all, we want to make sure that we provide a logical framework for your responses so that when you read a response, there's a flow to it. It's succinct and it's clear and logical. So again, idea with an edge allows you to do that. Secondly, it ensures that you define the terms in the question and thus demonstrate your understanding. I mark many exam questions and I find often the student gets a question and they sort of jump halfway into the answer. They don't actually define key terms. They don't actually acknowledge that the, there is important concepts that you have to discuss before you actually address the question. Again, this will help you. Thirdly, it helps you develop your train of thought from low order thinking to high order thinking. Sometimes you might get stuck with a certain aspect of answering the question, but as soon as you write down a concept that you think might be important and relevant, you're suddenly you are remembering things that you can attach to that concept and therefore elaborate on. So this is another system that allows you to go from low order to a high order. And lastly, it ensures you actually answer the question as it's written. Too many times I have a student answer a question that may ask to explain something and all they do is identify key terms. And as a result, they don't get the full marks that the question deserves. So again, this idea with an edge allows you to make sure that you actually answer the question that is provided to you. So let's go through each of the points and each of the scaffold. And the first thing the I stands for is identify. Identify just refers to the idea of recognizing something and naming something. So if your question simply asks you to identify something, that's all you need to do. But often you need to go further. So the question might ask you to describe something. Now what is describing? That's clearly more than just identifying. It's identifying what you have and then providing characteristics and features of what you've just identified. So if you have to identify two things in some sort of concept, you then may have to describe each one of those and provide characteristics and features. A higher level, is explain. Now explain is high level because it's not just about identifying and describing, it's relating the cause and effect. I say this to my students all the time, if you ask to explain something, you have to somehow talk about cause and effect. So you're talking about relationships, providing the why and the how. Of course you can't do this until you've at least identified and described. Fourthly, your question could be asking you to assess Assess is a much higher level of cognitive processing. What is assessing? Well, you're making a judgment of value, of quality, of outcomes, or results, or size. Again, if you have to, uh, again, if you are answering a question that is an assess question, you would actually go through each of these things first before you were assessing. Finally, the E stands, and this is where the edge comes in, is evaluate. And what is evaluate? Well, you are making a judgment based on a certain set of criteria you're determining the value of. What I'm arguing here is, is that as you go from identify down to evaluate, you're going from low order thinking up to some considerably higher order of thinking. But I'm arguing here that when you answer a question, and let's say it's asking something like you have to assess something, you don't start with assessing. You actually start with the concept of identifying the various aspects that are involved in the question. You would then describe, then explain, and only then assess. 
Now let's have a look at it a slightly different format, but basically saying the same thing. If I have a question that is requiring identifying, I'm just looking at the main component. That's all I may need to do. But if my question says describe something, then I do the identifying and then go on to the descriptions of the thing that I just identified. If I have to explain something, I don't jump straight into the explanation aspect. I identify the key terms, I describe those key terms, and only then do I then talk about explanation, the cause and effect. What if the question was to assess or analyze? Again, I would start off by identifying, then describing, and then explaining, and then talk about things such as what is the impact and how does this relate to the set of criteria. And at the highest level, you may ask to evaluate. Again, I want to see that I am not short-circuiting the question. I actually go through each of these steps before I decide to look at the extent of the impact and so forth. Now, to make this a little clearer, I'm going to now use two physics exam questions and show you how ideas with an edge might work. So here's a question from 2015 HSC paper. And the question says, and the following is a timeline for the Cassini space probe mission to Saturn. And you're asked to explain how Newton's laws of motion and universal gravitation were applied to the Cassini mission. So this is an explain question. So I would not straight away jump into the cause and effect of Newton's laws and the universal gravitational law to this particular mission. As you can see, there are three key aspects. There's launch, there's the slingshot, and then there's orbit. No, I would have to identify things first, describe second, and then explain. So here is a reasonably good response, but let's pull it apart. You can see in this case, what we have is four paragraphs, which covers the three aspects of the mission and then introduces all the laws involved. But they all start off with a concept of identifying. It's about illustrating Newton's laws, it's about during launch, once in space, talking about the slingshot effect, talking about stable orbit here. Then we have a description. So during launch we have exa exhaust gases are forced up out of the rockets. We have once in space the rocket maintains a constant velocity. There's no cause and effect here, it's just a description. Cassini uses planetary gravitation to slingshot or gravity system to gain velocity. And finally, a stable orbit around Saturn is achieved using Saturn's gravitational force. So clearly we have good physics concepts described here. But once you've described them, you need to explain what's the reason behind those descriptions. And so here we have, in the case of the launch, we have an application of Newton's third law. We also have an application of Newton's second law that as the mass decreases due to the loss of fuel and the acceleration increases. We have an example of constant velocity to Saturn, so that is an explained by Newton's first law of inertia. Then when it's in orbit, we know that the centripetal force is provided by the gravitational force, and it's mentioned again here. So you can see throughout this question, the student has started by identifying, then describing, and then explaining. Let's have a look at a second question. And in this question, also from 2015, we have discussed the effects on the environment of the development of AC generators. Now we've got discuss here. Now discuss is a higher order thinking. What we're here really is looking at the effects and discuss. So we're probably making some sort of judgment in the process. So a good response would do identify first, then describe, then explain, and then maybe further elaborate on some sort of assessment. Here is the answer. So they start off simply by saying AC generators have the capacity to produce enormous amounts of electricity. It's very low order, it did not identify. They then describe, they talk about how this benefits society. Then they go to the explain part, and here we've got the scaling up of voltage and, with, and that's of course important with transformers. So you're now causing effect why we might transport electricity at higher voltages and so forth. Only then do they discuss the impacts on the environment. And here we've got of course an assess. And so we've got aspects of affecting the environment. Here they've got a positive impact, for example, in, in terms of the environment because it's far away. So we have less polluting power stations, but if we have still AC generation by 
coal fired generators and so we have in this case the production of a pollution so there's a negative impact over here and then finally we have an evaluate and so here we've got an evaluation and suggesting that maybe we renewable sources are a better option to be used to avoid the pollution so they're making a judgment here towards the end so that although we have positive impacts because we have minimal uh, AC generators because of course we can transform them so there's a physical concept involved we can use renewable resources so we diminish the environmental impact in terms of coal fire power stations so there you have it we have idea with an edge my encouragement to you is that when you get those long responses think of that flow that you always identify first then describe then explain and when necessary assess and evaluate well i hope that helps you understand the concepts thanks for watching please remember like share and subscribe and by the way drop a comment down below if the video particularly has been useful and finally consider supporting me via patreon the idea is to develop resources and equipment to continue to teach physics at a high school level. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.